folks, welcome to another edition of Kenny's Two Pennies. This week we're going to take a look at another great victory by the Buffalo Bills, even though for half the game you couldn't see the damn thing. But first, here's a couple of quick hits. I have to say Alec. When I first saw him there in the hunt for Red October, I really became interested in how well he could do in other movies. And he has done a fantastic job the last 20 years. Steven, I kind of have to say, is a little on the weird side. Even though you did a good job in Posse, what, what's with going into doing a lot of DTV kind of videos and being a born-again Christian? But you know what, Stephen? I have to give you credit for being a Republican. Alex a Democrat. But the thing is, I'm, a, I'm an independent. But I kind of lean towards conservative, conser bleh, conservatism, if you know what I mean. Either one should work, as long as it doesn't really uh, leave any sore on my ass. I just wonder, Bills fans, was everybody as PO'd as me? Or, do, I wonder, did Nysek decide to sabotage the whole game? Hmm, for half the game you couldn't see the darn thing, mainly because some idiots decided to let go of their balloons, and because they had metal streamers, they come in contact with the power lines and they turn off the juice. Yeah, but the juice that I really want to talk about is sitting languishing in a prison in Las Vegas. Horsey doesn't have the electric company to block for him right now. He's going to spend time in a place where he deserved. Mainly because over ten years ago, he committed murder and he got away with it. But let's get back to the game. Even though I couldn't see it for half the time... Buffalo did pretty good, holding LT to 41 yards rushing, holding Darren Sproles to just one yard rushing, and also Trent Edwards showing no ill effects of the concussion he suffered. He completed about 15 of his first 16 passes, including a nice fade route to Lee Evans for a two-yard touchdown. Fancy footwork, Lee. Would you learn something from Najinsky or Barishnikov? But hey, there's no need for ballet in the NFL, although sometimes with Lynn Swan it did come in handy. I just wonder if you could get a football coach to coach a ballet team. All right, Barishnikov, you line up over here. No, the ballet ain't over till the Swan takes a dash, you know what I'm saying? I, again, or even though I couldn't see it, I could hear it on the radio, even though using cell phones might seem primitive when it comes to a radio broadcast. But from what I hear, our defense did a pretty decent job against that high-powered offense. Even the little bit I did see, and I wonder if my imitation of Paul Pazluzny over there while watching the game caused the network execs to go, Oh, we gotta shut the power off. <laughs> but Pazluzny, you had another monster game. But of course, when the power goes off, power go off. Oh, too bad. Then in the second half, I finally could see what the heck was going on. Even though the feed joined in a few minutes in, and Buffalo's offense still looked pretty good, especially Mr. Lynch. Nice run there for a touchdown. And Mr. Mitchell, even though you got hair longer almost than Troy Polamalu, although nobody, I think, has hair longer than Troy Polamalu, nice INT when it seemed the Chargers were going in to take the lead. And if you had gotten a couple of good blocks, you could have taken it to the house. Not my house, I don't think I could feed you. And then Mr. Lindell, another solid performance, even though you missed a field goal. 
Thing is, sometimes I'm willing to give you a mulligan, but I won't give you a mulligan if that had cost us the game. Hell, you got a great leg there, Mr. Lindell. Of course, Polish power Sebastian Janikowski showed he could beat the Jets from nearly 60 yards. But what, what the hey, even though we couldn't see the game for half the time, a nice 23-14 to 14 win, Bills. 5-1. and one. And now we go into when it really gets interesting. Three successive weeks against divisional opponents. First the Fish, then the Jets, then the Patriots, who took advantage of five turnovers to blow out the Broncos. But still, no Tom Brady. Now I hope this time we aren't going to be the Patriots' bitch. We've been the Patriots' bitch far too long. But well, Mr. Brady, you're not here to save him. I do have to sympathize with you for getting a second knee surgery, especially when it's infected. Nobody should have to go through that. But you're not there to help him. But well, let's hope this week, n not this week, in about three weeks, we aren't going to be your bitch again. We're going to nail you to the wall, Patriots. Let's go, Bills. Good job. I'm Ken Oz, that's my story and I'm sticking to it.